Book of Basketball podcast, Dirk Nowitzki. On my podcast back in 2011, Charles Barkley mentioned something he called the list. Every year in the NBA playoffs, they're going to start showing a list of the greatest players to never win it. AKA the best guys who never won a title. Barkley, Malone, Marino, Banks, Gervin, Yaz, Barry Sanders, all names that Barkley learned to dread every time they were grouped together. He called it the shit list. And even if it was woefully unfair, Barkley learned to take the shit list as something of a compliment. After all, every name on it was great, right? That's what he kept telling himself, but a piece of it always hurt. And he hated seeing other players face the end of their careers with that shit list guillotine looming. Well, who avoided the guillotine? Dirk Nowitzki. 2011, a few years before he wore that 2006 finals collapse and 2007's inconceivable collapse against Golden State, like the pock marks on Fergie the Florist beaten down face. I wrote shortly after that that Dirk secured his spot on the crap, it's just not in me all stars, along with Malone, Drexler, KJ, Elvin Hayes, Patrick Ewing, Ralph Sampson, all those guys. Now he's sitting in the latter half of his career, and we can safely say Dirk Nowitzki missed the boat as an alpha dog. I actually wrote that. It's a quote from me. Whoops. John Owe had 1998 from Ray Bork had 2001. Dirk Nowitzki had 2011, the year he booted himself off the shit list. Now we're closing the decade with Dirk as a level four pyramid guy. Oh yeah, I think he was like 39 when I did my book. He played so goddamn long. It seems like 10 million years ago when he was the seven foot German draft sleeper who could allegedly shoot like Larry Bird. It seemed preposterous. You know what else ended up being preposterous? His career. He's the best ever foreign NBA player not named Hakeem. He's the best Euro ever. He's the fifth best forward ever behind LeBron, Bird, Duncan, and Durant. Not quite good enough for Mount Rushmore, but better than Elgin, Doc, Pettit, Barkley, everyone else. He won an MVP. He won a finals MVP. He beat LeBron and Wade in the finals. He won a game seven in San Antonio during Duncan's prime, along with Pettit, Hakeem, and Elgin. He's one of four players in the shot clock era who averaged 25 and 10 for their playoff career. And he's a famously fantastic locker room guy, an insane hard worker, and someone who by all counts, everyone loved playing with at every point of his career. He's also a member of one of my favorite lists, the 15 year club. The only six NBA players who spent their entire careers with the same franchise, played at least 15 seasons and won at least one title. Here's the entire list. Dolph Shays, Hal Greer, John Havlicek, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki. Unless Steph Curry gets there, that's the whole list probably for the rest of our lives. Six Hall of Famers, 20 rings combined. Think about what that list means. Excellence, durability, longevity, loyalty, championships, the unwavering affection of an entire city. It's your best case scenario for a basketball career, and it's certainly better than Barkley's shit list. Let's just say Dirk crawled out of 500 yards of shit-smelling foulness, the likes of which I can't imagine, and came out clean on the other side. Dirk Nowitzki, 17th in the pyramid. <laughs>